Hello, and welcome to The Last Step. Ah, Frank should be joining us here from Zurich. He just flew in. Oh, look at, look at Frank in his chair. <laughs> hey, Frank. <laughs> always good to see you. Me and Frank have still been having our daily calls and staying connected, so it's always good to uh, see you in person. Oh. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's an interesting, uh, interesting day for me. We've been uh, continuing the mind training here <clears throat> at the Camus uh, Living Miracles Metaphysical uh, Center, and going through this book that I've been talking to you guys about, which will be coming out in February, and just going through the chapters. And Greg has been leading us through the chapters and the mind training and. Some of the questions that we've been asking ourselves or he's been prompting us to ask have been pretty much bringing us into this, you know, this state of mind to actually see what it is that, that where, we're, where our safety lies was our last, you know, the last thing we were asking. And he brought us to um, a section in Unwind Your Mind last night that was um, a question of what are my what do I love and appreciate about myself? And I remember the first time someone asked me to do that, it was probably about five, five years ago, and I could not answer the question. I was like, I just couldn't do it. So it was interesting to see this time around the things that I could actually see in myself or appreciate. And then the practice in, I think it's page 399 or 299. And then it's offering these things over to the Holy Spirit to be used because the Spirit can use anything that we think about ourselves or is valuable and it's actually really cool because this is what I've I was praying on what we would talk about today and with Frank and where his shifts are and with me and the shifts in the ministry that uh, Susanna was speaking about earlier I actually had tears in my eyes when when she was sharing because there is like there's this deep gratitude that it brings up in my heart of of what the ministry has become for me and the opportunities that I get to be a part of and then seeing where it comes from you know and I've been working with some of the people here and one of the guys Zach uh, has been coming to me in the morning and just this idea of what is it that I want you know and exploring our desires to see what they actually are and you know I said be specific you know he came the other day and he's like I've been doing this but you know it's just words and I said well you have to be specific you know when you say what do I want and you say the peace of God I say no that's bullshit I said, what do you actually want? You know, it might be to take a shower. It might be very specific and actually write those down. And I started doing this quite a ways back and then continued to do it, to write them down each day, just to offer these things up to spirit and see what would come back. And it was funny. I had so many cool experiences of waking up and being specific, like waking up in Mexico one day and saying, I want to go golfing. It's been so long since I've golfed. I want to go golfing. Sure enough, I write that on my paper and let it go. I go down to the 7-Eleven to get gas, and this Mexican guy who is pumping the gas comes up to my window, and he's like, hey, do you golf? I'm like, uh, yeah, but I have no golf clubs. He's like, well, I have an extra set if you ever want to go go golfing. And I'm like, oh, my God, like this idea of there is no loss. There is nothing actually going to be taken from me, even if I share everything. And what Susanna was talking about this, you know, sharing our inspirations within the ministry and, you know, actually having it come from prayer within, you know, even our studio team here. We get together every Monday with the Mexico studio and start sharing our ideas, what we're inspired by, what direction we want to move in. And that's what's happened even with my my journey and path from 12 steps to to where I am today, you know, sitting before you. And I was talking to Frank earlier. He was in Hanover for uh, for an event and then he came back to Zurich and it's been a shift for him because now he's going back to a new place and it's like okay what now what is it and I was prompting Frank with the question what do you want you know and there's a paragraph in the 12 step book that I always held really dear because someone pointed it out to me <clears throat> and I'll read it it's really short but it's actually three paragraphs from the end of the end of the book that they write and it's saying that it starts with still you may say meaning the people that are reading the book still you may say in quotes but i will not have the benefit of the contact to the people who wrote this book 
and then it closed quotes, and then it says, we cannot be sure. God will determine that. So you must remember that your rear reliance is upon him. He will show you how to create the fellowship you crave. And I used to do that with friends of mine back home, and it was this idea of create the fellowship you crave. Like, as much as I bring to it, you know, ultimately it is my mind, so the more energy I can pour into, at that time it was the 12 steps, the fellowship, the more I put in is the more I seem to get, or the more that has seemed to return to me. And it was with taking people out after meetings, or, you know, it was like, let's do this every Friday. And the more I actually did that, the more I saw the results of, oh my God, this is my own gift, you know, to give and receive are, are the same. And it's been no different within, you know, my path within the ministry, and even this idea of the studio and all this, it's like, if I stood up in a meeting, I was telling Frank this earlier, if I stood up in a meeting and told people, if they said, you know, I went back to where I was from and told them what I had been doing for the last two years, you know, they wouldn't believe it. Because for so long, I had so much fear built up around everything of going in that direction. And I mean, I would literally be like, oh yeah, in the last years I've, last two years I've produced or, you know, helped produce and been in a documentary, helped do a, an app started kind of started a tv studio and i'm building a studio in this station like it's absolutely unbelievable but it came from that desire originally and now i'm at a place where i know it's not me doing it it's like and that's what the book says it's like he will guide us but it has to come from that place and it was like i was sharing with frank even today frank is going to be sharing one of his uh meditations at the end of the day after uh, jason's show and this came as a result of him sharing an inspiration of doing these meditations. And I said, yeah, and he started sending them to me. And they're actually great. And now today he'll actually be doing it for the first time on this show. And there's something so amazing to me about this idea of actually just sharing, like Susanna was talking earlier, like sharing these, these inspirations or thoughts. And it's really listening to the guidance that what would spirit have me do? And then seeing the reflections that I'm offering these to line up and say, yeah, that sounds great. And then doing it. And it's like, oh my God. And this isn't to be confused with create your own reality. It's actually, I was thinking about this a few minutes ago. It's like, it's actually create your own unreality so that I can see that this is all I'm ever doing. And I can see the false is false. And then it starts to fall away. And I don't really have much value placed in these things. But in the process, it's this idea of getting in touch with that voice that would have me do these things to step outside my comfort zone and me and Frank were just talking about this. I said, Frank, this is actually for you. You know, this is, what do you want? You know, and being back in Zurich on his own and certain people contacting him and, you know, what is it that you want out of the community, the, the ministry, the fellowship, all of it is in my mind. And it's like, I'm creating that relationship at all times. And Frank has a great story even from this yesterday or today from the airplane where he had met someone. So, yeah, maybe we can hear from you, Frank, and see what this has meant to you, even just these past hours. I mean, this stuff was just coming to me this morning. Yeah, you know, I I, um, uh, mm -hmm. I I find that when I'm when I make myself available like this, it just <laughs> comes. You know, it, it it comes in, and the the thing on the airplane yesterday, I was sitting next to this guy, and we started talking. I usually don't talk really. Uh, uh, but but I, I, I we started Sorry. talking and uh, I told him there was a story that happened to me last week. Uh, there was this big storm and uh, and I had you know that uh, uh, I mean you know my, my with my I was in it with my boat and my boat was really the only one that survived you know uh, because I had tied down everything. Mm -hmm. Because I thought somebody was sabotaging me, you know, <laughs> and uh, and uh, I was telling Jeffrey, you know, somebody is uh, deflating my thing and and uh, breaking my ropes, mm -hmm. and so as a result, I um, I tied everything down, and this huge storm hit, mm -hmm. and all the sail, everything was on the, on the rocks except one of my boat, you know, because I had uh, <laughs> this blessing in disguise, and it's just interesting where the mind wants to go that I thought somebody was out to hurt me. So this guy was a sailor and I told him the story and then it led to more. Anyway, at the end, I told him about mind watching and I didn't want to hit him with the 
course right away because it would have been too much for me. So I uh, told him about Eckhart Tolle and because that was my introduction. And today I see him again because he was on the flight back today. And uh, I see him in the, in, the, you know, in the boarding line and he tells me, hey, you know, I already downloaded the book. I already started reading it. So um, it's kind of cool, you know, this, this uh, you know, I, I, I was, you know, when I, when I teach what I would learn and, and, you know, and I'm inspired to do it in a discreet way, which I have to, you know, when, when it, in a situation like that. And yesterday there was, a, I was at the christening and it was a family thing. And, and the, the same thing, there was the, the woman next to me and she wrote, wrote it all down. And, and I, she told me she had read some things about an Indian guy, you know, a Eastern Indian. And then I, and I really went heavy, you know, with non-duality and metaphysics and she got it, you know, she, she completely got it. So, so, uh, you know, what would you have me do? What you, would you, uh, 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 where would you have me go? Who do you want me to talk to? And, and, um, and, and this has been really such a blessing. I get such a kick out of it every time, you know? Um, but I'm, you know, I'm also really, uh, so happy to, uh, for, for the last five years, I've been doing this meditation in the meetings in, in the South of France. And, and I never thought this would lead to that. I'm going to do it here for you guys tonight. So, <laughs> Yeah, this is, this is the thing that happens. This is what like I was calling you to is like, these are the people that start showing up. And I was just sitting as you were talking and be like, what was it when, you know, Susanna was talking this morning and I felt this emotion or, and it's, it's really this invitation that, that I'm seeing given by, you know, David or the elders or whoever you want to say it is of the invitation to actually listen and follow. This is what I've been, you know, we've been working on. I've been calling you to is like, what are, you, what are you hearing, Frank? What is it? And then, you know, even that with trip to the island with that woman and the guy, it's like, this is really all the course is. It's like hearing our own internal guidance and following it and realizing that is where my safety lies. Like, that's where my true happiness is. And I like to see every time that this happens and I can see, like, even with the studio team here, and it's like, hey, I'm feeling a, there's another camera we're going to buy and so many seeming decisions coming up around this new building that we're building. And I noticed the temptation even to make some of the things myself, but every time I would call Nicholas and be like, Hey Nicholas, come on down. We're going to order something. Or what do you feel? It was like, that was actually where, where I felt the most joy. And he would actually say, Oh, thank you for letting me be a part of it. Like just buying the stuff online or, and it was like, Oh my God. Like the, it's even that, that fact, you know, of, joining together to see what we're what we're hearing together and that's all we've been doing you know in the mornings is seeing what it is and now it's like i said this is a big point for you even like you're back to zurich and you've had patterns where you watch a lot of movies and you tank or whatever it is okay now it's you're doing this once a week and i said well what next what now like there was an inspiration maybe around the 21 day retreat or something that happens to start you have to stay in zurich until uh, December 31st and then there's a 21 day retreat that starts January 1st at the monastery where you have a little place it's like well maybe we should look that and then you watch that thing and it's actually Frank's music in the background for the 21 day retreat I'm like Frank it's yourself calling you to the monastery next year <laughs> like early on and it's like this is actually creating my you know this place and yeah there's there's so much I could say about it it's like I even had Susanna come up and sit next to me uh, today because I was actually going to be on Andy's show at one point and then Susanna was on there and when she started sharing that stuff, I, I actually started feeling this emotion because it was, yeah, like I was just saying, this me calling to myself, but this idea that, you know, God's voice speaks to us all through the day and that we can, we can actually do this together, that I don't have to do it alone. Like the more I do join with, Nicholas or Jason or Susanna, whoever my primary relationships are at the time, the more I do that, the more I feel like, wow, like I'm not in this alone. I was sharing this with Kirsten. We were talking the other day and 
I watched the, or I listened to this. I don't know if it was it was early on in my in my journey, and it was Wayne Dyer or somebody was talking about Mother Teresa, and she said she's she's on this talk show, and they're like, "What do you what do you want? You know, we'll donate to your thing. We'll do all these different things." And she said, uh, "She goes, no, I don't want that. I don't. Well, what is it that you want? What do you want?" And she said, "She goes, I want you to do one thing. I think they were in Arizona, like Phoenix at the time." She goes, "I want you to." In the middle of the night, I want you to go out into the streets of Phoenix and convince one person that they're not alone. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, and now I don't even know why I'm saying that, but I know that there's something about even following this guidance together or doing that, this practice that we're actually being called into, this deep prayer. Like, you know, Susanna mentioned that. It was like, what are we being called in? We're called being called into what we're here for. You know, what we're actually here for is to pray deeply on everything and have reminders of people showing up. And I guess when I thought of this idea to share with you, Frank, it's like, that's what we're doing. And I said even to you, like, extending this to your own mind, like, you need to have, I originally said when you went to the south of France, you need to connect. I used to, in 12-step programs, have this rule that I would find three people that I would call every day that I respected their programs. Like, I respected their relationship with Holy Spirit or with God. And I would call those three people every day, and it didn't matter what I said to them. It was just that there was a connection with me. That was my connection to the Spirit. What we talked about in the last show, our relationship with others is our relationship with with God. And it's like I called you to that even when you got to Zurich now. And it was like you just had this, and you went away for the weekend, and people were inviting you there to speak. And, you know, to fly back and speak or do meditations, or whatever it was. And then you got a call from a woman in Zurich. Like, hey, you're coming back this way. I We can connect. And there's ones that are even going back to Holland that had spent months with us. There's Jan and Ellen. I know they've spent at the mystery school. They're going home. I'm like, yeah, these are the people that you want to connect with. These are the parts of your mind. This is the community in your mind that you need to foster that relationship with, I guess, is what, uh, what I'm saying. Yeah, you know, when, when uh, yeah, last week, that was really nice. Claudia, she was... Uh, in the community for a while and she uh and i yeah i was going back to zurich and i didn't want to go back and then and then i get this message i'm i live here you know and i'm in living miracles so uh also when when i broke up with emma a month ago people were contacting me that that hadn't seen the show that i haven't heard of you know in um in weeks and it's so gentle, you know, how spirit, um, bring, you know, it's, it, it, I, I feel, then I feel so connected and so loved and, you know, all my doubt thoughts fall away because sometimes they come and I'm thinking, you know, maybe I'm not, I'm not worthy of, of these things, but this is really for me, you know, uh, the community is such a it's such a blessing because all these things I always wanted to do to extend the message I always thought I wanted to do something you know with the 12 steps and I never thought we'd be doing this you know it's just so perfect it can't come it's coming out so perfect yeah so um, I'm I'm uh, very grateful and and yeah it, it's such a great thing you know yeah it's always this this thing that Greg has been calling us to as well is like, where does my safety lie? And where does, where do, what do I value? Like, where am I putting my value? And it's like, in what am I putting my value with it? Whether it's your meditations or the things you're sending me. And it's like, I've had this inspiration now that I shared around a studio and now it's, we're building a brand new studio. And it's like, yeah, to feel the, the gratitude behind that is actually beyond words. I can't really explain it, but I guess I want to get back to this idea of relationship. So I have Susanna here with me, <laughs> who doesn't want to be on camera, I'm sure. <laughs> but recently it's like, I wake up in the morning and I, I have this thing, uh, I have these this mind training in the morning and <clears throat> I have my morning routine. And there's one thing that says primary ships, that's like the millennial thing for relationship. Like, what are your primary relationships? And I order them, actually. It's like, okay, it's Jason, it's this, and it's this. And Susanna's always on the list because, you know, we're in this marriage and all this. 
but then it, you know sometimes I'll go to Nicholas or other ones and sometimes avoiding the direct connection with with her and because we don't seem to have actually a function together it's not that I have the studio with Nicholas and you know other things that are obvious and like with Kirsten right now we're helping I'm helping her with a tour I was inspired and I got to do that <laughs> I get to set up this thing in Miami which is is coming up and it's like amazing so we went out to uh, we went out to dinner with Kirsten and, <laughs> we, and Suzanne was feeling something and it was about a connection you know our connection and it was like it was almost like a re recommitment ceremony it was like we got remarried but it was really it's really a commitment to spirit it was like to this fear of love that I talked about in the last show when I went when I was there that night I had this like getting tired or whatever it was and since then we've been we've been practicing that but it was like this this habit of you were just saying the doubt thoughts and we have this assignment right now where it's like when she comes back towards me it was like she'll have all these thoughts that she shares but the direction is actually to trust my perception even after the show we just had she was just sharing and I was touched and I got up and I'm like that was amazing and immediately the thoughts came in maybe you can speak to it but it was like oh I should have said this and this and I always say Frank from our experience and in, in 12 steps I'm like there's the talk you want to give the t talk you give and the talk you wish you gave like that's the ego's interpretation of everything we're called to do and so maybe you can or about what you talked about I don't know why <laughs> Yeah, I guess the um, inspiring thing about it all for me is that when the doubt thoughts do come up and the self-judgments and this feeling of unworthiness, it's like I, I always had the thought I had to deal with it alone, like I have to fix it. Hmm. And, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't. Like, I don't have to do this alone. Mm. I feel like that was what the recommitment was about as well. Like, I I don't have to do any of it alone. So when the thoughts do come up, like, it's for me to just really trust Jeffrey in that moment. Because he's clear. I'm in the ego. Like, I'm having all sorts of self-attack and judgment and things come up and... It's like the, the willingness to be with the Spirit is through Him. Because mm. on my own, I, I couldn't do it. Like, I would get into this loop, and there was no way to get out. Like, I couldn't see an, a way out. Now Jeffrey is my way out. Mm. So I feel like that's really what the relationship is for. Mm. <laughs> Uh, I thought she was going to cry on Andy's show, but she didn't, so I had to bring her on my show so she would cry. <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> no, it's like, uh, yeah, when you say that, I mean, oh. yeah. It all feels like it ties together, actually, for me, like, even with you, Frank, and where is it, and that we're not doing it alone, you know, you always <clears throat> say that, I'm out here and you're there, and, you know, this this actually came to mind as what Jeff shared, uh, looking good, Jeff, <laughs> as what Jeff shared about that, it was really impactful when David said to him, no, the ministry's in your mind, and I think I had shared that, Jeff went to Peru, and then we started that one Brazilian retreat, and I felt, felt more connected to Jeff than I did the entire time I was with him in Australia or, you know, at Camus for a while. It was like, it doesn't matter where we are or what it is. It's like, are we actually in that true connection and communication? So I guess you could switch back to a one shot so I don't get in too much trouble here. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, so... It was funny, I also thought of <clears throat> this idea of, you know, create this fellowship, but what is it I want? Where does my safety lie? What do I value? It was David at Strawberry Festival opened it up to 
there was a session at the end of it that he opened it up to the whole, there was over 100 people there, and he opened it up and he said, we want to hear from you. We want to hear what it is you want from this ministry. What are you inspired by? And Susan Jameson stood up and she was like, I want to help promote the shows. And you can do so much, even with our show, Frank, and other ones. And she shared this inspiration. Now she's coming. She's coming in a, in a week or two to follow that, that inspiration that she felt originally and, and actually step through. And things are coming up as before she comes. And she's walking through them and coming this way. And there was something amazing about that whole, that whole night, like broad... David brought me up so I could share my inspirations and where they came from and how kind of what I started the show with like two years ago I didn't know any of these things and some people are like oh you know how to do all this I'm like I didn't know any of that like as a as a part of my willingness and handing over like we do in the 12 steps the third step as a part of handing that over this is what spirit did with that question Greg's asking us each day is what do I appreciate and value myself? It was so hard to get in touch with those things. But once I was able to say, oh, I have this. I can relate to people in this way. I can, whatever it was that I had, that I could actually say, okay, this is handing that over to spirit. It's being used. I have so many relationships, even with now the mayor of campus. <laughs> and like certain ones that, like that was the way spirit's using my personality self and all that stuff so that I can serve the spirit, you know, spirit can use what the ego made. And we have a great relationship, me and Nicholas, with our builders, JC and JC. We love when they show up here. It's like we get ready for them and Zach in the morning gets the table and the chairs out and the prints and opens the gate. And we're like, oh, Christ is coming to build our studio. And it's like, this is what the experience becomes after I get to share those those things. So we only have a few minutes, Frank. So I did want to see yeah, if you had any last just... words. You know, one of the, the readings, I, I, um, I read a lot the, the uh, call for faith. And I remember when I came to Mexico, the, uh, I went out to breakfast with David and he said, you know, all you have to do is show up. You don't have to do anything. And it's becoming so clear to me now what that meant. You know, all I have to do is show up. And, um, you know, if I interfere, I just... My job is not to interfere with anything, you know? And so, again, we're back. I'm so, you know, these nuggets you gave me uh, between not making the decision, the, the call for faith, the setting the goal, it's just a total map for living. You know, it's unbelievable because everything, uh, at least for now in my life, everything falls under that category. And the answer is in either one or in all of these... Um, uh, uh, in, in, in these readings, don't don't do anything, and it's become now a total. You know, I was just with family, and they were talking about all their problems. <laughs> I would say, don't do anything, you know. But you can't really say. So I didn't say anything. But that was my thing. Don't do anything. Just and and it's so wonderful. You know, it's it's uh, it's such a blessing. And now to be here and having been so afraid to be here and then having heard what Jeff said and David and you know now I'm here and there's all this function coming up so really just show up you know oh. that's what I'm doing. thank you so much Frank it's <laughs> yeah you. we're just about out of time and it's funny because when you say that it's once I do get out of the way and stop seemingly doing it seems like we do so much then so much comes towards us this this more that we're willing to to step in it actually looks like a whole lot happens for us so yeah i'm really grateful for that and susanna for showing up on my show and <laughs> and you frank and mexico yeah i guess we got to stay tuned for uh kristen and suzanne next and then jason and then back to frank to close it out today with a little meditation and yeah thank you all so much and <laughs> We'll see you soon.